over a century, the Chinatown neighborhood in Fresno, California has been a cultural and economic hub for the city's Chinese-American community. Home to businesses, restaurants, and community organizations, Chinatown has played a vital role in shaping the history and identity of Fresno. Many people today only know Fresno's Chinatown as the ruins it is now, but not many people are aware of the area's rich history and importance to the development of Fresno. Chinatown goes as far back as the late 1800s, when most of Fresno's ethnic communities were getting their start here in Fresno. Chinatown was officially established in Fresno around 1872, and a lot of other ethnic communities in Fresno also got their start on the west side of the tracks. Chinatown was actually caused by segregation. Um, the capital of the area had been militant, and when everybody decided to move down to the railroad tracks, the Fresno station, um, it was quickly determined that the people who built the homes that people were living in, made the bricks, built the homes, um, should live across the tracks. So um, it became quite a vibrant neighborhood, um, but it was segregated from the rest of Fresno. The Fresno train track seen on this street map may have served as the Mason-Dixie line of Fresno. It may be referred to as the Mason-Dixie line of Fresno because the west side of the tracks is where the white people of Fresno pushed all of their ethnic communities. The city of Fresno cornered Mexican, Japanese, Armenian, and Italian immigrants and eventually blacks into the west side. Along with all of those communities, slaughterhouses, landfills, and meatpacking plants were also thrown into the west side in order to make it as unbearable as possible. The white people of Fresno wanted to keep their city the way they liked it, without any racial diversity. Many Chinese immigrants took part in the construction of railroads developed in Northern California, where the demand for physical labor by corporations such as the Central Pacific Railroad Company met the economic opportunities that Chinese immigrants sought. Despite being sequestered in Fresno society, many Chinese immigrants played a pivotal role in the agricultural sector of Fresno. From cultivating figs to wheat, many Chinese immigrants worked blue-collar jobs. Ironically, train tracks ended up being the medium through which Chinese immigrants were se segregated from the rest of Fresno. In addition to farming and building railroads, many of them were expert brick makers. Bricks were a common material in late 18th century and early 19th century architecture, such as the commercial building seen here. A two-part block with a simple orientation. Even a Victorian two-part commercial block arose in Chinatown, albeit not many of them still stand today. Komodo's department store is proudly situated on 1528 1540 Kern Street and showcases architectural changes and hardships that resulted from the vitality produced during World War II. Despite the racism that contributed to the creation of Chinatown, a warm and lively community thrived there. The Chinatown district was filled with shops, hotels, restaurants, service businesses, and theaters such as the one below, an Art Deco European-inspired style that premiered popular films in the building known as the Azteca. For about 150 years, Chinatown was a vibrant live-work-play environment, while on the other side of the tracks, a strict hierarchy was enforced by the white men that controlled City Hall, businesses, and the police force. Another aspect of Chinatown were the tunnels that interconnected parts of the area, these tunnels were constructed to avoid the searing heat, but they also housed brothels, opium dens, and gambling parlors. These tunnels, along with many other parts of Chinatown, were integral to what Chinatown would become at its peak. Despite the possibility that these tunnels may in fact have been used as a way to foster these activities during a time in which Chinese discrimination was ubiquitous, the effects of the Yellow Peril on the propagation of rumors centered around belittling Chinese Americans may have also had significant weight on the perception of how those tunnels were utilized. Well, when the city fixed up the road and everything, they sealed all the tunnels. And then when they built the stadium, there was a tunnel um, that there was an old 
car in there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And the guy was telling me who was um, responsible for digging up the, the uh, stadium and stuff. The city official told him to seal it because if it was exposed, mm -hmm. then the um, historical preservation would have stepped in and that would have put a stop on the Grizzly Stadium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, you, you know, I don't know if you guys knew about this, uh -huh. but um, a lot of things happened with the city, you know, yeah. behind closed doors. Yeah, we didn't know stuff. about it until yeah. the stadium was built. Rumors were likely amplified by citizens that resided on the other side of Fresno's train tracks. Chinatown slash West Fresno was designed for members of the community that were not Caucasian, whereas the opposing side, separated by train tracks, was predominantly Caucasian community due to discriminatory practices during the 19th and early 20th centuries. On February 19, 1942, Executive Order 9066 was put in place. Thousands of Japanese Americans were placed in assembly centers before being incarcerated in internment camps across the United States. Many of the 5,000 Japanese Americans were held in the Fresno Assembly Center. The grandparents of Lin Akita, owner of Kagetsudo in Chinatown, were put in the internment camp and had to temporarily rent their business out. As far as I know, my grandparents, my grandfather was from Hiroshima, and my grandmother was from Tokyo. And uh, they came over here, I guess. They started the business in 1915, so they probably came here in the early 1900s, 1905, 1906, somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. uh, first, they were on Kern Street. I don't know exactly where, but 1920, they moved over here. Mm -hmm. And that's a picture of them in this store in 1920. Oh, yeah. There's all gas lamps and mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Um, the little boy is her first son, Roy. Um, my dad came in after that 19... Well, he was... That was taken in 1920. Mm -hmm. So he was born in that year when that picture was taken. Oh, wow. And your dad um, owned the business before you did? Or oh, yeah. You, so you took over from him? How uh hard? -huh. It was my grandfather, and then he had two sons, Roy mm -hmm. and Moss, and they took over. And so my dad took over, and as years gone by, um, I would watch him, you know, how to do things mm -hmm. and stuff, uh, but not really learn all the specific techniques until I came into high school. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started learning history, how to do the bean pace and the, the reads for the munching and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, when he had, when he became ill, then I started doing more and more. Mm -hmm. How many years? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm 68 now, so. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's like, 2021. Um, well, the church is one thing, mm -hmm. and then they used to have the Obon Fest here in yeah. Fresno by the old church. So that was another big thing. Everybody in the Central Valley would go to that church mm -hmm. to be Obon. Um, we just celebrated Girls Day March 3rd, and then oh, there was a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ethnic groups, mm -hmm. you know, like Chinese, Japanese, this, um, this mix, African Americans, uh, Filipino, mm -hmm. Germans, Italians. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it's not like today where everybody's, I don't know, angry or whatever. Yeah. Everybody got along. We looked out, out for one another out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're so close, a community. Yeah. And as the years went on, the first generation you know, passed on. The kids did not want to take over. Mm -hmm. So the buildings are dilapidated or 
Yeah, as is. Yeah. Um, this building here, the Bowan building, mm -hmm. it, it's the one that was burnt down next oh. to the cafe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what it looked like back then. The lady did the artwork on it. I mean, it was a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot of people that were born near Chinatown, mm -hmm. this area, they still remember the store. Yeah. They bring their kids and their you know, parent, their children bring their kids, mm -hmm. like during the snow cone season or the manju. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That helps us keep alive. And then we're getting all different nationalities that like yeah. the pastries. Mm -hmm. So that's really neat. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're like on the back burner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a lot of disappointment with the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we always been on the back burner. Um, with this high speed rail, I understand that they would like to demolish this whole area and just mm -hmm. rebuild. Mm -hmm. But this area has a lot of history yeah, that yes. they don't understand because they weren't born here. Mm -hmm. They're from out of town. Yeah. Most of them. Mm -hmm. And being government, I, mean, I don't think they really care. Yeah. Yeah. So, but everybody out here really cares about Chinatown. It's really, um, they work really hard to establish a business to make it survive. And uh, um, we understand that it takes a lot of money to refurnish or to even rebuild mm -hmm. an old building. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard when you have the Pavaluro house down the ways past Ventura, because mm -hmm. that's the hub for the homeless. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of the people in the north end, even in the Clovis area, they're afraid to come over here mm -hmm. because they think, oh, homeless, it's, it's really dangerous and bad. Mm -hmm. Not really. In the daytime, yeah. it's a different atmosphere. At night, it's a different thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's just like any other place, really. Yeah. In the night and days. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you still have Central Fish, Main Bank. Mm -hmm. um, there's Chef Paul's. He does great with his food. Mm -hmm. Home Cafe. It's a family run. Mm -hmm. Kuka's. Um, there's Rosie's Flower Shop. Mm -hmm. She's been here for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Alagante. Mm -hmm. Same thing, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, these people all work really hard to mm -hmm. yeah. an establishment. Yeah. In the early 1900s, a system was created to segregate the city of Fresno. In 1936, color-coded maps were drawn to determine who would be granted credit for buying houses. White neighborhoods were color-coded green, while the minority neighborhoods, like the west side, were colored red. This resulted in white Fresno residents being approved for loans and minority residents being denied. This practice is called redlining and further segregated Fresno and isolated the west side and Chinatown. The history of this map illustrates how the west side was designed to be a segregated, poorer area of town and is rooted in racism. Yet another barrier arose in the 60s. The urban renewal projects of the 1960s further wedged the divide in the city of Fresno. The projects were meant to revitalize the city, but instead further separated the west side. Redevelopment agencies were formed in California in 1945, and the redevelopment agency in the city of Fresno became active in the early 60s. And there, um, the focus was to address urban problems such as blight, degraded buildings, and a lack of affordable housing. So. Mm -hmm. Chinatown being able, began to feel the impact of that around, around 1960 and the redevelopment agency came in and declared 
many buildings blighted. And when they declared a building blighted, they pretty much had carte blanche to do that. When they declared a building blighted, it was destroyed. And the supposed goal of redevelopment agency destroying buildings was, yes, to remove blight, but also to rebuild affordable housing. In Chinatown, that didn't happen. So there are many pieces of flat ground in Chinatown that were, the buildings were destroyed by the redevelopment agency, and there was no building done in Chinatown, uh, affordable housing or otherwise, on any of those flattened properties. These urban renewal projects ultimately began the deterioration of Fresno's Chinatown. Fresno Chinatown has been home to many different minority groups. Not only did Chinese and Japanese people find community there, but historically so did Armenians, Mexicans, Italians, and even Basques. Chinatown is more than just a neighborhood. It's a symbol of Fresno's community's heritage and identity. It's a place where people have come together and celebrated their cultures and supported one another in times of need.